हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज द इलेवंथ लेक्चर ऑफ यूनिट नंबर फाइव फॉर द सब्जेक्ट मैकेनिकल मेजरमेंट एंड मेटोलॉजी एंड वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद द टॉर्क मेजरमेंट एंड दिस इज द लास्ट लेक्चर ऑन द टॉर्क मेजरमेंट वेर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द टेम्परेचर कंपनसेशन मैथड्स इन द स्ट्रेन गेजेस सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट द डमी गेज मैथड एंड द सेल्फ कंपनसेशन गेजेस फॉर द टेम्परेचर कंपनसेशन बट बिफोर दैट let us understand why temperature compensation is actually required in the strain gauges and the bridge configuration normally the strain change in the material will change the output of the system but in addition to that the experiment temperature will also change the output of the system and this output is actually the unwanted output okay and this happens due to the two major reasons very first reason is the resistance change of the wire in the strain gauge with the change in the temperature and second is the different coefficient of the expansion of gauges and metal to which they are actually bonded now as we understood that this temperature compensation will actually change the output so basically what is going to happen the strain output that we are going to receive will be the wrong output there will be some addition of the temperature change also and that temperature change effect has to be minimized or avoided and to do that we normally use two basic methods very first is the temperature compensation method or say compensation or cancellation method and second method is the evaluation method now as you can understand in the very first method we will try to cancel the effect of the temperature and in the second method we are going to evaluate or we are going to check the effect of the temperature and after that we are going to use the reduction method okay so normally very first method which is the compensation method is used extensively in the metallic as well as the semiconductor gauges but the second method evaluation is normally used for the semiconductor gauges only so let us concentrate on the compensation method only so in the compensation method we are having the two categories very first is the adjacent arm balancing or say compensating gauges in which what we can do very first we can use the dummy gauges second we can use two active gauges in the adjacent arms the third option is to use four active gauges and last option is the poisson's method the second category is the self compensation where we can use the selected melt gauges or we can use the dual element gauge so these are the options available for each categories but in this specific lecture we are going to concentrate on the dummy gauges and the self compensation gauges only so let us start with the very first the compensating method and in which we are going to understand the active dummy method as you can understand from the line diagram there are total two strain gauges available so this is basically the two gauge system so very first strain gauge that is available over here is known as the active strain gauge why with this particular strain gauge is available on the testing material where the force will be applied and the strain will be measured actually okay and the second is the dummy strain gauge why it is known as the dummy strain gauge because it is mounted on a dummy system that means the material will be same over here as the testing material okay the temperature conditions or say environmental condition will also be same over here but the material on which the strain gauge is attached will not be under the strain so there will be no force applied so there is this is going to have no strain on it so that is why it is known as the dummy strain gauge very first on this material we are going not going to apply any kind of strain second the environmental condition of both the strain gauges are going to be same okay so 
वॉट एवर द इफेक्ट ऑफ टेम्परेचर अकर्स ऑन द एक्टिव स्ट्रेन गेज द सेम इफेक्ट ऑफ टेम्परेचर विल अकर ऑन द डमी स्ट्रेन गेज बट एक्टिव स्ट्रेन गेज विल ऑल्सो एक्सपीरियंस द स्ट्रेन ड्यू टू द फोर्स अप्लाइड ऑन द टेस्टिंग मटेरियल बट द डमी स्ट्रेन गेज इज नॉट गोइंग टू एक्सपीरियंस दैट स्ट्रेन ओके सो दिस इज वॉट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एक्टिव स्ट्रेन गेज एंड द डमी स्ट्रेन गेज now both the strain gauges are basically applied on the western bridge circuit on the same side okay now whatever the temperature change will occur in the active strain gauge if it is added in the western bridge circuit now due to the change in the temperature the dummy strain gauge will also experience some of the strain or say some of the change in the resistance that will be subtracted in the western bridge circuit so ultimately the temperature effect will be compensated or we can say the eliminated by the second strain gauge so this is how the active dummy method works now let us understand about the self compensation strain gauges theoretically the active dummy method is the ideal method for the temperature compensation but this method also involves some of the basic extra tasks like we have to actually create a separate test system for the dummy gauge also so if we want to reduce that particular situation in that case we normally use the self temperature compensation gauges now this self temperature compensation gauges uses the basic principle that the temperature coefficient of the resistance of the sensing element is basically controlled based on the linear expansion coefficient of the measuring object so basically the linear expansion coefficient of this particular strain gauge element will be controlled based on what the expansion coefficient of the measuring object and how it is done basically the thing is that the linear expansion coefficient shows us the change in the length whenever the change in the temperature occurs okay so if we try to keep both values almost same in that case whatever the length change will occur in the material of the testing due to the change in the temperature the same length change will occur in the strain gauge element also so due to that the compensation of the temperature will be done automatically this is what the basic concept is now for that we need to understand the equation of the thermally induced apparent strain which is indicated by et it is basically given by the alpha by f where the alpha is the temperature coefficient of the resistive element of the strain gauge which is to be controlled divided by the f which is the strain gauge factor plus the changes in the linear expansion coefficient of the strain gauge element in the measuring object okay now over here we need to keep value of et zero and due to that we are going to get the temperature coefficient of the resistive element of the strain gauge now normally we need to control this particular element alpha as you can understand the temperature coefficient of the resistance of the strain sensing element is actually to be controlled okay so we need to control the value of alpha and that will be controlled by controlling the linear expansion coefficient of the strain gauge now how this will be controlled normally the manufacturer of the strain gauge will add one heat treatment element or say heat element that will actually control the temperature of the resistance strain gauges and this is how we will be controlling the value of the alpha okay so basically this is how the self temperature compensation methods acts so this is the end of this particular session and this is the end of the strain measurement in the next lecture we are going to understand about the temperature measurement till then keep learning have a good day